If you've ever wished that Microsoft 365 Copilot could understand your job, your style, or your workflow a little bit better, today's video is for you. I'm diving into Copilot's new memory and personalization features, showing you how to make it truly your own. Let's jump right in. Okay, so this is a fairly new feature. It's been out for a couple weeks now, and this is Copilot being able to remember details about you and about your preferences, things like that. And it's really under two different sections. There's the custom instructions, which is things that you explicitly put in proactively for Copilot to understand more about your preferences. And then there's the memory feature of Copilot, which is more of a passive uh, background way of it to remember certain details about you and what you want it to remember throughout your chat process, right? So in the course of chatting, it's going to remember certain things. Now, both of these features are found under the settings in your Copilot chat. So if you go to your m365.cloud.microsoft, you go over to chat, We've got the dot, dot, dots in the upper corner, and this is where we find the settings for Copilot chat. When we go into the settings, we see that we've got custom instructions and Copilot memory, so those two separate sections. Now, if we go into the custom instructions, we can make sure that these are turned on, of course, they're on by default, and then we can put anything that we want in here about our preferences, the way that we want Copilot to respond, more information about us. So I could put in here, I'm a uh, chief marketing, officer for jolly roger java a pirate themed coffee shop in kansas city and i could put uh i prefer uh short concise responses with bullet points and tables i prefer a friendly uh tone that is casual, right? So you kind of put certain little details in here. And now you can keep adding to this. You can add pretty much as much as you want. There is a limit to this text box. Unfortunately, it doesn't give me a character limit in the bottom corner, but I've noticed that if I go and I paste this in a whole bunch of times, it pretty much keeps letting me save it. So I can see that it's checking and I've saved that. So you can see how much text that is. If I keep going down, keep adding more and more and more, it does get to the point where I end up with like too much text and it will error out up at the top here. Okay, so that wasn't too big. Let's keep making it even bigger. And save that. There we go. So I found, you know, the limit. I don't know what the character limit is, but it's pretty big, right? Like see how long that scroll bar is. Now, if I delete a whole bunch of that, then hopefully it will let me save again. So see now I'm within that limit and you can see how much you can put in. So don't be afraid to put a lot of detail in here. Um, think about things like what your job profile is, uh, information about your interests, what you care about, what your goals for work are, uh, things like that. Not just, you know, what you like and what you don't like in the responses. Um, one other thing I'm going to add here is uh, don't put EM dashes in responses, right? So you can even be very explicit like that. And uh, EM dashes, lots of emojis, things like that are kind of the, you know, um, kind of the hallmark of, hey, this was written by AI. So we can ask Copilot to not put some of those markers in uh, the response so that it looks a little bit more natural or a little bit more human made. Another tip that I have is try putting in the tools that you use uh, every day. So uh, I'm going to put my day consists of making lots of uh, PowerPoint presentations and uh, visuals. I don't use Excel very much 
in my day to day, right? So if you kind of tell it like the style that you like to work or the tools that you like to use, Copilot will kind of steer its responses towards, hey, would you like me to create a slide outline for that? Would you like me to create a visualization? Because maybe you told it that you like visuals and you like to whiteboard, things like that. Okay, so we've added some things to our custom instructions. Let's take a look at how the memory works with Copilot. Now, if I go back out and I'm in just the general settings here, I go into memory, you can see that, you know, there's several things that I've put in here because I told Copilot to remember some details about me. Like, you know, I'm, I'm organizing a bunch of tackle boxes for fishing, or I'm trying to do meal planning, you know, for, for, uh, my family. And, you know, there's certain things that we enjoy and certain things that we don't like in our meals, stuff like that. And this is remembering these details over time through my chats. Now I can delete any one of these details if I want to. So like if I want to delete that nobody in my family likes mushrooms, I can simply click the little trash can icon right here and it will delete that one single memory uh, from its memorization. Now, if I want to temporarily not use the memory in Copilot, I can click the little switch right there and it will just not use that, but it doesn't delete any of the memories. So you can toggle it on and toggle it back off. And if I want to just wipe its memory and start over from scratch, I can click delete all memories Go ahead and click on that and it will just wipe all of its memory uh, bank out for me. So the other tab up here at the top is work profile. And if you have uh, information in your Outlook profile, like your title, your skip manager, your direct manager, things like that are provided by your company in your Outlook profile, they will be listed right here under the work profile section. And those will most likely be grayed out for you because they're provided by your organization. Um, so you don't need to worry about you know changing anything in that work profile. So as I started using Copilot memory, I started thinking through like, how do I get it to remember things in the course of, uh, of our conversations? Like how do I kind of prompt it to remember? And Copilot is pretty intelligent, right? If you tell it like, oh, remember that I prefer this type of ice cream or something like that, it will detect that explicit intent and it will remember that about you. But I don't wanna to have to put that in you know, to my prompts and maybe I don't know what to put into my custom instructions. So I was reading through the blog announcement for Copilot Memory and Microsoft had a really good uh, prompt at the bottom that kind of jump starts the memory collection process. And that is ask me 10 questions about myself that you can use to remember uh, things about me. And they, uh, they kind of left it at that. And I wanna add something onto this because when I was testing this out, it basically asked me 10 questions as like a bulleted list. And then it collected all of that into one giant memory or a couple big memories. And I want to have a little bit more control over that and have each memory be a separate object so I can delete them if I want to. So I'm gonna say, ask me the questions one at a time and wait for my answer. So by adding that little bit on there, it's not gonna give me all 10 questions, it's gonna give them to me one at a time individually so I can you know, ask, a, I can answer those and it will save it as a memory. So what are your top three goals? Uh, so I'm gonna say number one, uh, to grow our bottom line, I don't know. Number two, to expand to new markets. And number three, um, to provide the best coffee in my region, right? So I can put those three things in and I've answered that and you see that now the memory has been updated. If I mouse over that memory, it tells it kind of rewrites it into a little summary, but you'd see what the snippet is and I can manage that memory if I want to uh, by clicking manage memories. 
So the second one, what kind of marketing channels? Um, I rely on social media and we'll say like Instagram, uh, TikTok, Facebook, right? Um, local events uh, and small business sponsorships, right? Something like that. So we kind of put that in again, the memory was updated and I'm not going to make you go through all of the 10 questions that I ask, but if you go back and forth, you're kind of playing a game of 20 questions or in this case, 10 questions with copilot and it's remembering those as individual um, memories. So if I go back up to the settings, go back into memory, you can see individually there's question number one, which was about my goals as a chief marketing officer. My second one was the second question, right? What, how do you typically do your marketing, things like that? So those are individual memories. And uh, I like doing that a little bit better than having like a big block of a single memory because I can manage those things individually. Okay, so at the end here, I want to cover a couple of questions that I've seen come up multiple times over uh, the past couple weeks since memory and uh, custom instructions have come out. Um, the, the first one is how do I get Copilot to remember something? And you saw in the demo that you can ask it to ask questions about things for you or if you provide clear intent. So if you tell Copilot to remember something, then it will go ahead and remember that for you. Um, I haven't found a clear cut and dry way for it to remember details every time. It's kind of a nuance of natural language where if you say, oh, remember that I prefer this or that, Copilot will key in on that and remember it for you. Just watch for that little tag that says memory updated. That will be the indicator that it adds something to its memory bank. The next question that I see a lot is, where are these memories stored at? And they're not in the same hidden mailbox as your prompts and responses, right? So your, your chat history, that's stored in a hidden mailbox folder within your uh, Microsoft Graph area, but it's stored in something called a memory store API for Copilot, and it is inside your customer tenant boundary still, and it's attached to you as the user. So much like uh, everything else in the Microsoft Graph that is personalized to you, your email, your chats, uh, the people you work with, the uh, files that you're working on, that manifest of things that you do, that's all within your view of the Microsoft Graph, your, your own semantic index. And the memory is held within a memory store API within that area. Uh, it still respects data residency requirements. So it's still stored in the uh, geographic location where the rest of your data is stored as well. And it doesn't you know, move around or migrate around outside of uh, where your other M365 data is. And then the last question or concern that I've seen come up is about uh, Copilot training. And like, hey, does it train on my preferences or does it train on my memories? Is its memories of me going to come up in somebody else's chats? And the answer to that is no. We still have the same protection and the same behavior that we had before, which is that um, the, the retrieval augmented generation of Copilot, it will go and look at the things that are in the graph, like relevant files, relevant emails, relevant chats, and it will also look at your preferences and your uh, memories that, that it has about you before it goes to the large language model. And then it brings that back in when it crafts the response back at the, um, the pre and post processing uh, process within Copilot system. So it's not used to train the large language model. It's never stored in the large language model. Um, it's only used to really personalize the future responses for you individually and not for anybody else. So that pretty much does it for how you can make Microsoft 365 Copilot smarter and more personal by remembering specific things about you and your preferences. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss future updates. See you next time.